Tupac had a lot of enemies, but one man who hated him the most was Diddy. He had zero love for Tupac or Suge Knight, and whenever they met, it was war on all fronts. Ultimately, Diddy found a way to allegedly take out Tupac, and now he's about to pay the ultimate price. All evidence pointing to him shows that he's gonna be behind bars for a hell of a long time. Keep watching till the end of this video to see just now Diddy allegedly sentenced for Tupac's murder. Goodbye forever. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Before we get into the video, I want to give a quick shout out to the number one celebrity jeweler, the Ice Champ. The Ice Champ is doing a special deal for the next 24 hours on diamond watches, chains, and more. Follow at the Ice Champ on Instagram now. Diddy allegedly paid Keith D to take out Tupac. Diddy has consistently been the linchpin of the entire operation that led to Tupac Shakur's demise. Until recently, Diddy remained in the background, feigning ignorance about the ongoing events. As the police began linking the pieces together and Keith D was apprehended for Tupac's murder, rumors began circulating implicating Diddy in the crime. In one of Keith D's many stories to the cops, he detailed how Diddy masterminded the assassination of Tupac. While acknowledging his own role in the killing, he asserted that Diddy was the architect behind it all. After the airing of the 2018 series Death Row Chronicles on BET, which showcased some of Keefe's initial public statements on the shooting, Las Vegas police revisited the case. In 2008, Keefe D initially discussed Diddy's role in the shooting with the Los Angeles police while seeking immunity in connection to a PCP drug ring case. This confession was subsequently detailed in the 2011 book Murder Rap, authored by Greg Cadding, a former detective involved in the case. During the investigation, Keefe claimed that Tupac was shot by his nephew Orlando Baby Lane Anderson from the car they were in. If they would have driven on my side, I would have popped them, Keefe added. The gun was a Glock 40 hidden in a secret compartment in the armrest. And I ain't never told nobody that story, man, he said. Keefe claimed that Sean Diddy Combs ordered the hit, allegedly telling him, man, I want to get rid of them dudes, referring to Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight. Keefe claimed Diddy's issue with Knight stemmed from Knight Knight's infamous diss to the bad boy executive at the 1995 Source Awards. At first, Diddy only wanted Knight, Keefe said, but he later targeted Tupac as well for Hit Em Up, a diss on the notorious B.I.G. and bad boy. Keefe and Diddy allegedly settled the terms of the hit at Greenblatt's Deli, where Keefe requested $1 million to kill both Tupac and Knight. Keefe claimed he told Diddy, we'll wipe their ass out quick, man, it's nothing. In his 2019 memoir, Compton Street Legend, Keefe provided more details about information he had previously given police. He wrote of an alleged meeting with Diddy at Greenblatt's where Diddy requested the hit on Tupac and Suge Knight. Like a lion on the Serengeti, I'm able to smell and see fear, he wrote. Puffy was full of fear. Keefe wrote that he told Diddy that killing both Knight and Tupac was not a problem for him. Keefe then described seeing Tupac stick his head out of a BMW, their car turning around and pulling up next to Tupac and Knight at a stoplight. He said that Knight looked terrified and Tupac reached for a gun after sighting their white Cadillac. That's when the fireworks started, he wrote. One of my guys from the back seat grabbed the Glock and started busting back. They then drove off and later even saw the two ambulances carry Tupac and Suge Knight. Diddy's first attempt on Tupac's life. Faced with allegations of orchestrating an attack on Tupac, Diddy sought to deflect blame by accusing the Los Angeles Times of falsehoods in its report connecting him to the 1994 shooting. Diddy vehemently refuted the newspaper's assertion, which was based on FBI records and exclusive interviews, that he was aware of his friend's intentions to ambush Tupac at a music studio in New York City. It is beyond ridiculous and completely false, Diddy said in a statement after the Times website posted the report. I am shocked that the Los Angeles Times would be so irresponsible as to publish a baseless and completely untrue story. The newspaper claimed that two Diddy associates, James Jimmy Henchman Rosemond and Jimmy Sabatino helped stage a robbery of Tupac after offering the late rapper $7,000 to record a track at the studio on the night in question. 
Tupac sustained four gunshot wounds but fortunately survived the assault, which happened nearly two years before his unsolved murder in Las Vegas. Christopher Wallace, the rapper propelled to fame by Diddy's Bad Boy Records as the notorious B.I.G., met his demise months later, believed to be in retaliation. Rosemond, a former convict who had risen to prominence in the hip-hop industry as a talent manager, alleged libel against the Times and dismissed the story as rubbish, specifically naming the Times reporter who had been probing Tupac's murder for over six years. Rosemond conveyed his discontent to the Associated Press. Chuck Phillips has reached a new low by employing fourth-hand information from desperate jailhouse informants, along with ancient FBI reports to create this fabrication. Phillips, who disclosed in 2002 that B.I.G. supplied money and a firearm to Tupac's assailants, located the three individuals responsible for the robbery in 1994. Out of the trio, only one affirmed the newspaper's account implicating Rosemont. Tupac publicly held Diddy and B.I.G. responsible for his shooting, attributing the incident to the violent feud between his West Coast group and their East Coast rap network. The Times report references a B.I.G. track record after the assault that details the circumstances and incorporates the lyric, You rewind this, bad boys behind this. Diddy tried to have Tupac's brother killed. Moprim Shakur, Tupac's brother, disclosed that Diddy contacted him to deny any involvement in the 1996 murder of the rap superstar. In a conversation with The Art of the Dialogue, Moprim mentioned that Puff Daddy had reached out to him to address and dispel any rumors regarding his role in Tupac's death. The boy Puff called me though, Moprim said. Puff called me back in the day. He was like, I just want you to know I ain't have nothing to do with your brother's murder. I know who you are, but we never met, and I just want to call you man to man and let you know that I ain't have nothing to do with your brother's death. Moprim expressed gratitude for the call, but found it challenging to fully accept Diddy's innocence in the matter. At the time, he was actively seeking information about his brother's death, prompting him to reach out to Diddy for a conversation. He remained skeptical, believing that Diddy might be attempting to protect himself and succeed cure some goodwill in case of legal complications or potential arrest. Moprim Shakur first tackled the rumors of the bad boy CEO being involved in Tupac's death on the comedy hype news show on the heels of Dwayne Keith D. Davis being arrested and charged in Tupac's murder. I don't have to do anything. This individual Keith D. mentioned Diddy's name. Law enforcement has a job to do. Will they do it? It does feel like Pac is getting vindicated because back in them days when things were going down, everybody thought he was crazy, Mo Prem said. He expressed gratitude for his freedom and lamented that he couldn't say the same for his late brother Tupac. He shared that he closely monitors media coverage of the case and has observed developments. Mo Prem noted that various names have surfaced and the pieces of the puzzle are gradually falling into place. He remains hopeful that one day the true perpetrator of his brother's murder will be apprehended and brought to justice.